Well, fizzle, fizzle. Here it comes. Good Lord. What is fixing to take place should have every American absolutely sitting on the ends of their seats. Well, all I can say is you better go grab your favorite cup of coffee right now because the topics I'm fixing to talk about, you'll certainly want to be prepared to take some notes. That and more here on the Make a Statement podcast. Well, as we sit here, we are exactly 263 days, 5 hours, 4 minutes, and 30 seconds away from the most important presidential election that will ever take place in this country. Okay. By now, I'm sure that nearly every person who truly gives a rep has had the chance to either watch or listen to the interview that Tucker Carlson did with Vladimir Putin. I sat and watched it with my family. And let me get this out there right now. No, I do not support communism, nor do I carry Putin's water. However, I think that as a tax-paying citizen that basically has been drugged into a proxy war that none of us wanted, I think it's important to hear what it is that the other side has to say. Now, after listening to the interview, it did have me rethinking about my stance on the whole situation that is currently taking place in Europe, going on almost two years now. And what many folks don't even realize is this actually began escalating in 2014. I'll go back and do a little research and see who was president then. At the end of the day, at the end of that broadcast, what I gathered from it was that Russia felt that Ukraine was preparing to attack them, courtesy of us, of course, and that is what brought on the invasion of Russia into Ukraine to thwart that. However, in the silence in the gallows, the American government has been sending billions on top of billions of dollars in both money and weaponry to Ukraine, which at the end of the day has simply pissed Putin off. In essence, we are, by the very definition, in a proxy war with Russia. Now, whether or not you want to face that fact or not, how, if you were Putin, would you see it? And what still puzzles me to this day when I ask myself, what do we need to protect over there that is so important that could potentially draw us into a direct conflict with Russia. One truly has to wonder, that is for sure. A lot of people now are calling Tucker a traitor or a fanboy of Putin. Personally, I don't see it like that. I actually think Tucker done what I would like to call true journalism. I mean, after all, if you're going to tell a story, it's vital, it's crucial to make sure you are getting the facts from both sides. I mean, let's face it. Ukraine isn't known for being the most righteous country. The amount of corruption that exists over there is almost that of the same playing field as what some see right here in America with the global leftist. I think in a very clear and subtle way, Putin made his intentions very clear, and I believe that most people have been asleep at the wheel. All I can say is this. We are going to get exactly what we have asked for. And by then I mean, while we keep trying to poke at the Russian bear, I think in a not-too-distant future we may very well find ourselves reaping what it is that we have sown. All right, now, let's keep on moving here. Got a lot to cover in a short amount of time. So what's on the plate next? 
Well, let's talk about this ongoing border crises. You know, most have to be a complete buffoon or blind or deaf, because I guess I don't need to tell you that we are still dealing with an emergency at our southern border. Literally tens of thousands continue to pour into our nation, and we have absolutely no idea who they are or even where the vast majority of them are even coming from, nor any background information on them. However, what has been noted is the fact that the vast majority of illegals that are coming into our country appear to be from what country? You guessed it, China. Now, does anyone else besides me see any issue with this? Realizing the ever-increasing tensions between China and the U.S., one has to wonder if there is a possibility that any of these military-aged individuals are being put on standby from the CCP in conducting an attack on the U.S. right from inside our borders. Now, years ago, people used to say that China would never invade the U.S. because they realized that behind every blade of grass was a U.S. citizen who owned a kinetic projectile device that would inflict bodily damage. Sorry, I had to phrase it like that, but certain words here on the bigger platforms seem to trigger the algorithms they can cause you to get slapped pretty hard, and I don't want that. Now, that being said, I 100% absolutely stand with Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, as well as the rest of the states that have committed sending their National Guard troops, if so needed, to support the ongoing efforts to try and secure the border. However, there are several other states that are having massive, and I do massive amounts of illegals crossing every day as well, because people seem to fail to realize that you got New Mexico, Arizona, California, and let's not forget the largest border that exists in the United States, and that is the one that we share with Canada. I think what frustrates me the most is when I watch different people inside of the current administration continue to proclaim that all of this can be resolved by adding more CBP agents and to give more power to the president to handle the border crisis. Hang on here. Excuse me, does anyone besides me remember what it was that the leader of our current administration said on day one when he took office and the actions he took with the mere stroke of his pen? He basically rolled out the red carpet and threw out a huge welcome sign with open arms right along with our tax dollars. President Biden doesn't need any further powers from Congress to fix this. All he has to do is reverse his mistake by putting the very things back into place that existed prior to him taking office. And he can do that with a stroke of his pen, just like he did when he decimated it. I mean, let's face it, we certainly had way less than we currently do crossing our borders now, but I'm afraid we're not going to see any actions from him, as if you haven't noticed, his current state of mental health doesn't make me feel like he's even able to execute something that simple. I'm not even going to be bashful about this. What scares me even further is what would happen in the event of us finding ourselves in a direct conflict with any of our adversaries. Think about that. And, wait, and to make this just a little bit more complicated, we now have a Secretary of Defense who, without any kind of notification to anybody, seems to disappear to the hospital. So who is it that's in charge of protecting and defending our country. Now, if that doesn't make the hair stand up on the back of your neck, I sure as heck don't know what will. 
And all you have to do is to view any news source other than mainstream media, whether it be on TV, an app on your devices, YouTube, or a multitude of other outlets to see that this struggle is real and ever increasing with the passing of each and every day. However, I am a little encouraged and heard little birdie chirping that there is talk about possibly putting Tom Holman back in charge of our borders, which would be the absolute godsend if that was to take place. That would be a blessing in disguise. However, I'm not holding my breath as that was the former leader of this country's pick, and I don't think Sleepy Joe would choose him because it may damage his pride to have to admit that he could do the job better than the joker that they finally impeached. We'll just have to stand fast on that and see where this continues to go. But okay, let's go ahead and move right along right here. Next, I want to talk about our civilization being on the brink of meltdown. I mean, let me ask you this. What the flip is going on with our society? I know that's a really broad-based question, however. Have you ever witnessed anything going on in previous years? Look, I'm soon to be 58 years old, and in all of my life, other than a few discreet items, I mean, we're going to look at things like Columbine and a couple other things in the Las Vegas shootings, a few other events, I don't know when I have ever witnessed people acting the way that they are. I mean, look at all the violence that took place over New York City and what goes on in Chicago and many other large metropolitan areas around the country. I mean, you've got illegals beating our police. And listen, I don't care who you are. You beat on a cop, you should be placed in jail, stand trial, and sentenced to a lengthy prison term. But let's not just focus on some of those events. For those of you who may have TikTok on your phones, I mean, if you don't, get it. If for no other reason, you can go and look at videos of some of the most idiotic, stupid things that you will ever hear coming out of some of these people's mouths. And here's what's scary. Some of these very people are your children's teachers in public schools. Got you a little scared? It should. And you want to talk about social justice words going wrong? Man, that's the epitome of it. It's almost like they have been programmed to spew the garbage they think they know something about. Sadly, most of what they say they know nothing about and do nothing more than look like complete and utter morons. And again, don't believe me? Go watch a few of them videos. It will have you be a believer. However, what's that is that many of our children, what you think about that, many of our children or your grandchildren are actually interacting with these morons on that platform. You best know what your kids or your grandchildren are doing. That's all I'm going to say. Because if you don't know what they're viewing, you or your family may find one of your family members acting out in ways you never dreamed of. I listened to a detailed report, news clip, and it was on YouTube. It was a city hall hearing held up in Chicago, which struck me as being the most odd is the fact that most, if not all, the black community is literally losing their minds over the fact that they are being taxed to provide for all the illegals, yet they aren't getting any of the benefits. I can understand why they're upset, and I'd be exactly the same way. But what has traditionally been a major Democrat city? Trust me, folks. Can anyone here besides me see a massive red wave coming to many of these larger metropolitan areas? I would. I mean, come on. They are absolutely beside themselves and have absolutely every right to be. I'm going to use myself as an example. I'm currently awaiting on a decision by the Social Security Administration on my pending claim for disability. However, I can assure you, 
if I was to press them about why it's taking so long to receive an answer, whether they would ever admit it, I can almost assuredly tell you it's because all the processing and benefits to these illegals, that is getting in the way. Thus, putting me and millions just like me at the bottom of the waiting list. Now, I know I'm not the only one going through this, and it's beyond frustrating. And then imagine the amount of people who have retired already and maybe have just begun their personal process for filing for benefits and having to wait for an astronomical amount of time to receive the benefits they've worked their entire life for? Does anyone besides me see the problem here? It's like anyone who was legally born here almost doesn't matter anymore. And that Everything is geared for and towards the ever-ongoing onslaught of illegals coming across our borders. All right, moving right along here, let's talk about the major elephant in a room. We obviously have an election coming up in November. In my honest opinion, this by far has to be one of the most important elections that I will have ever participated in. You have to truly look at what is at stake here. But what scares me the most is one of the person we want to take a second term is denied that opportunity. And we all know who I'm talking about here. That's right, I'm referring to the big T man. But I can assure you this. You know, they make a big fuss about everything that happened on that day in January. A few years ago, but let him be denied or let him not get elected. I can see this country erupting into a major field of jungle warfare right here and people losing their ever loving minds. And could you blame them? I am almost sure, and without having any level of hesitation or reservation about this, if the election goes wrong, what do people think they saw that day that they're trying to persecute the men for will ultimately seem like child's play in comparison. Mark my word. I don't think this country has nor will ever see anything like this. That being said, let's go ahead and move on to what has to be one of the most important topics that I will ever discuss with you on a podcast. Stay tuned because I'm fixing to dive into that and reveal some information that if you don't already know about, I highly encourage you to start doing your own research and react in a way that provides you and your family with the greatest level of protection. Stand by as we get ready to jump into the last topic of today's broadcast. Last, but certainly by no means least, let's talk about this secret national security threat that was released here just a couple days ago from House Intel Chair Mike Turner. Now, what I'm about to reveal to you should have you ready to take immediate action to ensure that you and your family are protected against an impending apocalyptic event. Let that sink in. House Intel Chair Mike Turner is requesting that President Biden declassify information that he feels has the potential of imminent danger to the United States. And having listened in on several other broadcasts, I managed to find out learn that Russia has or is preparing to launch nuclear weapons into space. Some of you may be saying, so what's the big deal? We've got things in space. Well, don't be too convinced of that. And at the same time, Russia sent something up and down to space. SpaceX set up a secret mission for Space Force the same day. Any correlation there? Look, everyone realizes what the impact of dropping a nuclear weapon on any nation would look like and, and what it would do. And for anyone who might be too young... To remember, go back and take a look at some of the vintage videos from Japan. Back in the day when we dropped the two nuclear devices on them, 
and see what happened. So the countries that have them realize the imminent amount of destruction that would be caused, and the one who fires first would almost, without any hesitation, be guaranteed to be destroyed themselves by the opposing country with mutual assured destruction. But hang on here. Hang on here. This is where it gets a little gray and where things change. There's another possibility that most nobody ever gives a thought to. Well, we're talking about an EMP. And, you know, I'm sure most people have heard of that, but probably have very little, if any, knowledge of what it actually means or what the outcome would be from an EMP detonation over the continental United States. Let's talk about it. You know all these wonderful electronic devices we all like to play on? You know, our cell phones, our computers, our iPads, yada, 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 anything that connects to a network. Oh, and let's talk about our cars, the electricity that powers our homes, businesses, which most nearly 99% of everything we come in contact with has some form of electronic component or circuitry. And did I forget to mention our electrical grid, which is more than outdated? And if you remember, these these are things that T-Man all wanted to improve upon, and nobody believed him, and nobody wanted to give him the money for it. But in the event of an EMP, our current lifestyles would come to a crumbling halt. I want you to think about this for just a minute. Just imagine, you won't be able to start your car. We won't have any running water because the pumps that deliver to your home wouldn't have any electricity to pump it there. And we would have no way to find out any information as the very networks that we are accustomed to using every day would be crushed down, would have no access to them. Does that sound scary enough to you? And here's what should scare him. It's been said it probably wouldn't take more than two days before we experience a complete societal breakdown and then things would really start to get ugly as if they wouldn't be ugly enough already. I have found several items across major news networks that have briefly been talking about this. However, I can almost guarantee you the vast majority of people either didn't pay attention or just kind of treating it as a so what kind of event. You know, have been hearing this for years now, yada, yada, yada. It's almost like people become numb to it. People, I'm here to tell you, this may be way more serious than any of us can even begin to think about. So you need to begin doing your preps. Do what you need to do to take care of you and your family. Make sure you got some food stocked. Make sure you got the critical essentials for your kinetic projectile devices and kind of stocked up there. It's all about being prepared and being on the lookout. Well, I'm pretty sure I think I've covered everything that I wanted to get out here today and apologize for delaying even getting this out because... So much has been changing as far as the information over the past few days. It is really, really hard to keep up with. And remember, as always, I want each of you to keep your head on the swivel and to be continually aware of your surroundings and situational awareness. Because you never know when you may need to respond to something to save yours or your loved one's life. Also, this is important. Please, 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 please make sure your devices are always charged up and that you have a way of receiving an EMS alert. Because with every second that passes, we are finding ourselves on the brink of a possible global tragedy. Until next time, keep it real. Keep it moving forward.
and by all means, continue to keep making a statement about the things you believe in. Until next time, be blessed. Peace out. Do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time You're delirious, mysterious Because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last Yeah now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself.